What's up guys? Today is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We've got a milestone day today. After today you are officially done with the book of numbers. Uh, the, in my opinion the hardest two books of the Bible to read are uh, Numbers and Leviticus. Though as far as Bible reading plans it, people that are going through and reading the Bible in one year uh, it's very seldom that they get through those two books and well done <laughs> you got through those two so numbers and Leviticus are done we're starting to move into Deuteronomy um, anyway today's day 82 March the 23rd today the block of scripture for the one-year Bible folks we've got numbers 36 verse 1 through Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 46 Luke chapter 5 verse 29 through chapter 6 verse 11. Psalm chapter 66 verse 1 through 20. And Proverb chapter 11 verse 24 through 26. Today I want to look at Luke. Um, in Luke I want to look at uh, chapter 5 verse 27 through 32. 27 through 32. This is, uh, this is verse 27. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at a tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his house. And there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at the table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes, they were grumbling at his disciples saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but to call center, uh, sinners to repentance. I, I just love this section. Uh, so first off, Matthew and Levi are the same dude. So, um, that's something we, we need to get straight here for, for the impact of this to, to work. Matthew and Levi are the same dude. Back in this period of history, folks ended up having their Greek name, their Roman name, but they also had their, their Hebrew name. It, for, for example, great example of it, Saul. Saul was known as, in, he's the uh, one you see in the book of Acts. He also wrote most of the New Testament. Saul, uh, he was known as Saul from Tarsus. So that'd be the equivalent of today's first and last name, right? Saul being his first name, the location, his lineage, his family line, last name. For example, some of you guys have the last name Smith. You trace that back. Chances are you come from being some sort of smith, a blacksmith, a, a goldsmith, a, <laughs> a poop smith, I don't know, some sort of smith. But your lineage is dictated in your last name. Who you are is dictated in your first name. But this is kind of one of the starts of the whole three name system, having that middle name, that secondary name. So Saul, his name was Saul. Saul is the Hebrew name. Kind of like King Saul of the Old Testament. Then you've got of Tarsus. That's his last name, if you will. And then you've got his Greek name, Paul. Um, some people say, well, God, Saul, uh, Saul, Saul. They, God came to Saul and changed Saul into Paul. No, no, God didn't change Saul into Paul. God changed Saul's heart, and Saul went out to continue doing ministry, and he was also known as Paul, and later he started going by Paul. Same, same situation if I started going by my middle name. Um, but he started going by Paul, his Greek name, to reach the Greeks, to, to reach the Gentiles, to reach the Romans, because that was his ministry. Why would he go by some Hebrew name if he's not trying to primarily reach that people group? So, that's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother day. But... Uh, Matthew, Matthew is a Greek name, 
and you've got Levi. Levi is the Hebrew name. Levi, going back to the tribe of Levi, one of the 12 sons of Jacob, So, um, which you'll remember as we read through Genesis. I'm sorry, that, that got real nerdy real fast. In a nutshell, it boils down to this. Levi is Matthew. Matthew is a Levi. That's what you got to know. All the other stuff is extra. What you got to know is Matthew is Levi and Levi is Matthew. Same dude. So, here we see, we see that Jesus goes to the home of the imperfect. He goes to Matthew. He goes to Levi. And, and he's, he's dining with him. And Matthew, Levi, he brings in all of his tax collector friends. All of these, as the Pharisees said, all these sinners. And he reclines and eats with them. And he makes this statement that he doesn't come for the well, but he's coming for the sick. He is a doctor for the sick. And you know what? Because of an interaction like this, Matthew, Levi, Levi slash Matthew, Matthew slash Levi, same dude, Matthew's life was changed. Completely changed. So much so that he left the money, the wealth, the luxury, and he went and followed Jesus. And he was so deeply impacted by Jesus that he became one of the 12 closest followers of Jesus. And, and he ended up then becoming one of the apostles after Jesus died and resurrected and ascended into heaven. He was one of the apostles that brought the good news of Jesus to the world around. And he, he just couldn't get past it. And the Holy Spirit moved in his heart to the point where he wrote the gospel, the, the book of Matthew, that you and I have read through in this one year study, this journey together. And it started with Jesus being willing to be the doctor to the sick. If you read Fox's book of martyrs, Matthew ended up uh, not faring so well in the end. He ended up uh, losing his life preaching the gospel, and reaching out to those in need. Because he was totally transformed. He saw Jesus reach the sick, and he gave up everything, even the comfort of his own country, to go into other countries and take them the gospel of love of Jesus Christ. To be the, the one delivering the doctor to them. So, all of this to say, we are all sick. We all have this, this sickness of sin in our lives where we, we have this, but it's, it's needing to come out. It's needing to be removed and cured, forgiven and covered. And the only one that can do all of that is Jesus Christ. And he starts the work here on earth, but when we die, if we die following him as our Lord and Savior, then we're in heaven and he finishes that process and he totally removes that sin nature from us. He is the great physician. He is the doctor of each of our souls and hearts. And I just want to encourage you with this. If there's something you're struggling with, if there's a, a particular sin struggle in your life right now, be it pride or unforgiveness or what, whatever it is. Seek the doctor today. Because he's the only one that can heal you. And he's not going to be upset with you needing healing. It's what he came for. He came to be the doctor to those who are hurting and sick. Just like you and me. Take care of yourselves out there.